Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to the next installment of 10 Minutes With. Today we're gonna look at Kentaro Miura. You're like, this is a black image, Rich. What is going on? We're gonna look at issue 301, chapter 301. If you are currently reading the story and you don't want spoilers, definitely don't watch this video today. Maybe wait. Um, and uh, if you just are here to look at some fun art, then uh, come join us. All right, let's get into this. No time to dilly-dally. All right, so I I looked up online and I said, uh, I just Googled, um, what, what are your favorite chapters of Berserk? And on Reddit, I found a thread and uh, I looked through the different um, issues, chapters that uh, people had referenced. And this is 301, as I said, and uh, it looked like a fun one. So um, I'm not up to 301 chapters into the story. I have started reading it, but... Um, yeah, I'm not this far in, but uh, I, I mean, I, this won't really spoil it for me. But um, it's like when, when I was looking at the images and, and kind of picking stuff out, I mean, one thing I was really impressed with is the consistency within the art. Um, you know, these these drawings, the, the costuming and stuff like that is so on point. And although different soldiers wear different armor, if you look at the shoulder pads in particular, you'll see different hooking mechanisms depending on um, their suit of armor. Um, and it's it's real interesting as you go through the story, but there's a real great attention to detail in this work that um, is easy to just sort of take um, for granted, um, you know, as you're looking at it. And um, this is a really, really nice page. A little bit of um, screen tone on it. Some nice, nice value. Really, really a fan of... Um, black and white art and it's not that i'm anti-color because i actually love color work too what i mean is um i can enjoy a really really solid black and white comic um with the with this gray quite easily well i mean even even um just traditional like american black and white art um too um with even if it doesn't have all the the value on it but uh I've always been a fan of this this aesthetic, you know, this that that um, the gray in it, not necessarily screen tone. Is there's there's I mean, if if you have Clip Studio as an example, there's a lot of different types of screen tone that you can use. Not all of it's like little dots. Some of it are they're more like shaded screen tones and all, all kinds of interesting things. You can make your own screen tone. I won't get into a tutorial right now, but um, it's it's pretty easy to actually like make custom ones, and you can even do it on the fly with black, like a black background and an eraser, and do your own sort of um, shades and stuff like that. But, uh... So one thing that always kind of it's it's interesting to me as an American comic book artist and and is just a fan of original art, not collecting original art per se, but that's what I'm going to talk about for a second. Is that 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 there's all this original art from Berserk just somewhere in file cabinets and you know in a closet somewhere, and most manga artists don't sell the work. Every once in a while, you might see a piece or two that they've given as a gift or whatever, but, you know, it's just not how they operate, you know? I hope that the stuff isn't destroyed. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, I mean, look at even in American comics, I mean, it's it's a long time ago for us now, but 80 years ago, they didn't, you know, they didn't return the art to the comic book artists. They would just throw it in file cabinets and then people would steal it and, you know, throw it away and do all kinds of stuff with it. Use it as scratch paper. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's crazy. But um, I I would imagine that this stuff is taken better care of than that. But, uh, yeah, it's just crazy to me because you go, man, these originals are all somewhere. This is cool. The When you do a drawing like this with all this... Um, like rendering and stuff like on it, you really have to keep it consistent. And again, kind of going back to the character um, costuming and how um, uh, he keeps it consistent. It's the same with the monsters. You know, if you have a furry monster, unless it's a real far away shot, you're probably going to be drawing a lot of fur. Like here we go again. You know, this is exa exactly what I'm talking about. You know, and again, the costuming on this armor is, would be real time consuming. I did a page recently. Um, it was just, I'm finishing it today, but uh, uh, 
uh, there's like 30 characters on it. This is way more. I mean, these these small ones. This stuff can take a while. Now, there's some of these maybe stats. Like if you really sat and looked, you might be able to find like some of these guys might be the same characters here. It's not an impossibility, but um, you know something like this. This is this is probably all. Um, individual drawings um and uh, this would take a long time you know even 20 minutes a character you just put five or six hours worth of work just on that background um so a page like this could take you know 20 hours they work hard any documentary that you ever see on um mangakas uh boy the deadline stress that they endure to get these books out you know, it, it, it makes you understand why they use assistance, um, because uh, just the, the demands of their job is so insane. In particular, if you're going to have a, a, a quite detailed or, or even background heavy one, you know, and a lot of times like, you know, some some manga like this, this one doesn't have it. But, um, you know, I mean, they're 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 manipulating photos and stuff like that for backgrounds, but that still takes time, you know. Ultimately, the, the end look is different, but this is all hand-drawn. You can tell that it is. This is pretty amazing, too. It's it's funny because looking at this, I'm, I'm nearly sure that it's inked, but the, um, the reproduction um, isn't so jet black everywhere that, that uh, you would see it. But this is another just amazing original. I know that they did the Lone Wolf and Cub kind of like artist edition book, but it would be really, really cool to have um, some of these, just the most iconic um, manga books reproduced that way. Two size and scanned off the original boards with no manipulation so that you can see, you know, like nothing is cleaned up, if there's notes in the gutters or whatever it is. It would be really interesting. nothing is better oh god look at this this is insane so this was by request when a couple of people ask for this but i get asked i get asked for kentaro a lot to be honest it's, it's definitely one that people wanted me to return to i know that i've done at least one video on his work and possibly two i've shot multiple but sometimes if uh if i'm not happy with the end result i will uh, not upload it so it could be something like that but i'm nearly sure i have one up um uh this is great man the again the armor is so cool on all these guys and these monsters are just awesome you know this i wanted to get into this too because this is an important distinction to make and i know my art my channel is an art heavy channel but one thing that i stress to my patrons on and off i don't like talk about it like every video but i but generally speaking i will remind people of this if you watch most normal comic book or manga reviews on youtube they are focused on the story and the characters okay most of them will talk about the writing and the writer and the art is kind of like a thing that they sort of feel obligated to mention now i'm not saying all but many most, in fact, I would say, I watched a 45 minute video the other day. It was, or it was, it was either 20 or 45 minutes on, on a book. And, um, literally, I think the person spent about a minute talking about the artist, but the whole time about the story. And not, not even the art, like, like throughout the thing when he was talking about the story and the characters and everything that they had been through. It was never about like, oh, the drawing on this page was so cool and the dragon was so detailed and this, you know, with someone like Kentaro, they're obviously going to talk about the art because the art is so incredible. But I'm just saying that it's, it is important to realize when you're, when you're creating a story for a comic book that your story and characters need to be awesome. Okay. Good art will only get you so far. And on, on top of it, I mean, you know, look, if you're an art fan and you're an artist, that's, that's going to be sort of like your ticket but um you know there's my point being is that there's a reason that millions and millions of manga sell i want to say that kentaro they i saw a statistic it was like he had sold like i, I want to say something it was between 80 and like 320 million copies of his work are out on the shelves it's definitely because of the art but it, it's the story, you know, that's the thing is, is people were blown away by Berserk and the, just the, the characters. So anyway, you get the point. This is really, really cool. Look at the 
this up here. So it's nice. I was I um, was noticing like this armor here is all pretty consistent, and they're all wearing about the same armor. As you get up in here, they're wearing actually like different things with them. Um, the different weaponry it's pretty cool nice nice touch it's easily um you know like if you had um this type of armor down here memorized um you know uh, one way to approach these characters would be just throw them in the same armor like who who would know but uh that's that's kind of the attention to detail that you've got going on here and then this top panel is great with all these like little figures really really cool all right what do we got cool monsters check more soldiers jeez this is a very detailed issue i'll be honest the first time that i looked at this i was like this is this is good this is pretty detailed seeing it a second time shooting this video this is a lot of work like a lot of work man it's a lot of stuff to draw this would take a few hours to do this third panel even cranking, you know, the thing is, is you could, you could, you could go in and, and if you've drawn enough guards already, like just off of a rough sketch, probably finish this and put all the detail in the costuming in, but still it's a lot of little costumes to draw. Look at this. And you know, I mean, going back to the art story thing, mm -hmm. when you, when you read a book like this, it makes the art even better. Honestly, I always feel like a great story amplifies the art and you really, really start to like love the characters and just, you know, their little facial expressions, all the little subtleties, you know, because you've traveled with them. You've gone on this adventure with them. It's just an incredible um, like layering effect that comics has. It's it really is one of the best mediums of art. It was funny as someone asked me um, recently about um something something to draw like what's my favorite thing to draw or something like that my favorite thing to draw now is sequentials i i used to be kind of like more oh i like cover pieces and pinups and little single shot things not anymore this is what I, I i think is the most it's the most fun to draw the most interesting it gives it's the most variety you're gonna have way more surprises not only for your fans but for yourself when you do stuff like this because you're just drawing everything you're creating worlds, you know. A pinup is nice, but it's very kind of one one thing, you know. And they're cool. It's, it's it, they're definitely muscles that I want to um, kind of reactivate. But at the same time, um, I really like doing the um, sequential stuff more. All right, that's ten minutes with Kentaro Miura. It was awesome. That got me fired up to draw my last. I'm I'm. Uh, I have five hours left of work on two pages um, that are nearly done. And then um, all I have to do is the last page of Crystal Planet. So by probably around 1 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon today, I'll be starting the last page of Crystal Planet, which is already penciled. I just have to do finishes on it. But, um, yeah, I'm getting there. I'll be done tomorrow for sure, which was my goal. So I hit my deadlines. That's the thing. Let me get into this for one second. One important thing about me going into crowdfunding book for anyone that's interested in Blaster Kid, and you have to understand this, is... I've been doing comic books for 25 years, and I've done hundreds of books, okay? I'm not someone who dipped in and out of comics or did, like, one really good book, like, 20 years ago or 10 years ago or 5 years ago or whatever it is. When I work on a book, I work on a book, and I get it out. And my goal for Blaster Kid is to put out two a year, which would be six issues worth of content, possibly a little bit more. Um, and uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm committed to doing the book for years, so... It's something, you know, my interest in things like manga and these very long series where you really, really get to enjoy characters for a long time, that's what Blaster Kid is to me. Blaster Kid isn't me dipping my toe into crowdfunding to try to make a bunch of money on one crowdfunded book or, or you know, it's like, oh, I really like these characters. Well, you're only going to get two issues and then it's going to go away. That's not what I'm doing with Blaster Kid. If, if I can, I'll work on it for the next 10 years. So, you know, that will all rely on, on all of you. But uh, that's the goal. So, all right, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great day. I love you all. Thank you for supporting my channel. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow with another video. I already know what I'm going to do. So stay tuned. All right, later.